Hey everybody, Ray here. In a recent video, I talked about the air filtration system that I put up in my shop. It's working great. And I briefly mentioned the fact that I was putting together this two-stage dust collection system to go along with it. This works great as well, and the combination of the two has really eliminated a lot of the dust issues in my workshop. So I put this together on a nice mobile cart so you can roll it around and connect it to whatever you want to work with. And if you're interested in seeing how I put this together, hang in here with me and I'll show you how to do it. Also, don't forget, hit that thumbs up button for me. It really helps my YouTube metrics. And subscribe and hit that notification bell. Now the main components of this dust collection system, I bought a new 10 gallon rigid shop vac. It's got a peak six horsepower motor on it. You've got just a regular Home Depot bucket and the Home Depot dust stopper. The dust stopper comes with two 90 degree elbows and a hose that will allow you to connect the dust stopper to the inlet port of your vacuum. Now you don't have to have this specific shop vac to make this mobile stand. The reason I chose one like this, and there are several different models out there that have this same kind of thing, is because above the wheels there's this little slot here. And what that's originally intended for is a place to store your extra pieces for your hose. Well it just so happens that if you get an inch and a half PVC pipe with the coupling that goes on there and you want the coupling that's got that little ridge inside there so the PVC won't slide too far in there, well if you get that inch and a half with the coupling that happens to just fit perfectly into that slot. So that just automatically gives you a base to start from to build your little dolly here. And like I said it's already got wheels on it and so it just simplifies things to use a shop vac similar to this one. Now to make this cart, you will need some inch and a half, right there it shows your inch and a half PVC, and you will need four of them 32 inches long. Now the 32 inches just happens to be what works for this vacuum and it gives me enough room to get my dust collection bucket over the top of it and I can still get the top off the vacuum if I need to. So your lengths may vary based on the type of vacuum that you get. You will need four of the couplings, the inch and a half couplings so it can fit down in the slot down there and then you will need four caps that fit on the top of the inch and a half pipe. And those caps will look similar to this. So this is a smaller cap, this isn't the inch and a half. But what you'll want to do is take that cap and drill a quarter of an inch hole through the top of it. Then you can take that cap right here and connect it with a bolt through the top to hold that cap. Then all you have to do is to take your PVC with the coupling slide it on into your vacuum slot and then fit that into that cap right there and that holds that really well. Now for the top of the cart I have a piece that is 19 and 3 quarter inches by 21 and 3 quarter inches. Admittedly it's wider this way than I need it to be but I wasn't sure, this is kind of a prototype that I made and I wasn't sure if I might want a little tray here to throw screws or something in or pencils while I'm working so I left that a little bit wider. The diameter of the hole that the bucket goes in is in my case 11 and an eighth inches. I've seen several other YouTube videos out there that have said about 11 and a quarter inches. Either one of those measurements will work just fine. And then I just came in here with my jigsaw and cut holes to put my extension pieces in and I'll show you how that works. But essentially once you've cut that hole in the middle, your bucket, and this is the dust collection bucket, so you can see 
where it's really done a good job of catching that material before it goes into the vacuum. So this bucket just fits down in here like this. Now once your bucket is in your stand, you simply connect your dust stopper to that bucket. And then you take the provided hose that came with the dust stopper with a 90 degree angle and you put that on top the dust stopper. This hose then goes down to the inlet of your vacuum cleaner. Your vacuum cleaner hose that's going to pick up debris now connects to this right here. So it connects to your dust stopper. And then you can use this hose to connect to whatever tool you want or just to vacuum things up or whatever. But all of the heavy sawdust gets caught in here and never goes down into your vacuum cleaner. Only the fine dust winds up in your vacuum cleaner and some of course will escape into your garage and that's why I have the air filtration system. Then you want to start thinking about where am I going to store the extra pieces that come with the shop vac. Well in my case because this stand is the size that it is I can take those extra pieces and all I did was take a, a jigsaw and cut out the place where I needed it. In this case I needed a little notch by the circle to accommodate the holding pin there. And then you can just slide those right down in there. So now you have a system that not only is mobile and can move everything around, but all these pieces that are kind of a pain in the butt to store and you don't want them hanging around in your garage, you can put them all in the same cart and they're right where they need to be when you want to use them. So this works out really well. And you can see here and here, this is where the quarter inch bolts are. And I used uh, inch and a half quarter inch bolts to go down into those caps that I showed you to hold them to the top. This, by the way, is quarter inch plywood. I would recommend that you use something like a half inch plywood or a half inch MDF or something like that. I just happen to have this laying around, so I thought, well, for a prototype, I'm going to go ahead and use quarter inch plywood. But frankly, and this happens to me a lot, I did the prototype, I'm so happy with it, even though it's only a quarter of an inch and it's maybe not quite as sturdy as if it were a half inch, it's working fine and I will likely never replace this prototype. Now one of the great things about this unit is its portability. When I need it, I can pull it over to whatever tool I want to use it on and I can connect it up. Now you'll find that when you're trying to connect a shop vac to any one of your tools, rarely will it fit perfectly. So you'll always have to find some sort of adapter. I have found that I can usually get these rubber couplings. And this particular rubber, rubber coupling goes from an inch and a half to two inches. And I can tighten that down on my miter saw and I use the exact same one on my little portable table saw. And then I can just get this tight enough to where I want to, when I want to put that hose on there, it fits perfectly. And what I did was right here, you'll see that I had to cut a little notch out of the edge to accommodate the clip that comes with the hose. But now that fits on there just great. And these things are pretty cheap. There's all kinds of DIY methods to make these couplings. But these are four or five dollars. And to me, it was just as easy to go out and buy these and they work perfectly. So on my miter saw, you can see where it has these little flaps and the tube right here. And that's where the air gets sucked back and supposedly is going to suck all of the sawdust out of here. And it normally comes with a little bag on the back, but I've replaced that with the vacuum hose. And so it's got these two little flaps and they are supposed to stay open. Well, I can tell you that the vacuum is so powerful that what will happen is it'll start closing those flaps up and it's actually limiting how much um, sawdust can go through there. So I've got to take care of that issue. Um, but just to show you that the strength of that vacuum coming through there 
through my dust collection system, it's very powerful and it will actually just suck these flaps closed. I'll give you an example of that. And you can see how it just sucked them closed. So that's how strong that airflow is. So it will do a great job. It really is very powerful. So I'm going to have to work on that to make sure that I can prevent that from closing up on me. For now, I can just bend them back a little bit and it'll do a pretty good job of getting that vacuum sucked up into the saw. I think you could see by that example, even before I do something about these flaps here, and that'll be in a video to come, uh, when I didn't have the vacuum connected, there was a lot more a cloud of dust around here. When I, when I turned the vacuum on, there you could see there was much more of a stream of sawdust that got sucked in to the vacuum system as opposed to not having the vacuum system on there. So this is really going to work well. What I'm going to have to do next is build myself a little bit bigger shroud in here that will even capture more of that dust. So like I said, that's in a video to come. But the two-stage system does work great. I've found that I'm really pleasantly surprised with how much less dust there is in my shop between this and my air filtration system. So I hope you found this some, of some value. If you did, don't forget the thumbs up button, subscribe, and hit that alert bell, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.